All right, so today we're looking at that obnoxious tree structure that we had on homework five. And I wanted to kind of explain to you guys um, how it works because it's one of those things that's kind of borrowed from computer science that Sista has. And um, it's, not, it's not exactly the most intuitive thing, especially when we're kind of using the lingo of computer science. So um, uh, this was, I think it was the fourth problem on homework five, um, I don't remember, but basically we were given this this sequence of zeros and ones, It's it's got 16 uh, characters in it, and um, and we we were asked to draw a tree with depth with a depth of three, um, and I I think that that right there kind of threw a few people off because what it, what we mean when we say a depth uh, in terms of a tree is we we mean how many times does it branch and you might actually when we draw this tree a depth of three you might at first glance you might think it's actually a depth of four but that's because like the first one doesn't really count we say like to just have the first node of our tree here which we call the root node um, that right there this right here what I've drawn for you is a tree of depth of depth zero um, so and actually if I before I drew anything we would call that a tree of depth negative one but at any rate <clears throat> what we're doing here is we're gonna say so because we're doing like three after this our first branch is going to be a, a depth of one and then the next branch will be a depth of two and then the next branch will be a depth of three and and the reason we've got three is because we're going to be looking at subsets subsequences here of three so although we have 16 digits in our sequence here we're only looking at you know this three and then this three and then this three and so on. So, so we actually only have 14, uh, like, candidates of, you know, 14 subsequences of length 3. Um, so that, that, that's what we want to do here first, is on our first branch in our tree, give myself plenty of space here, hopefully this time, we're going to say, all right, well, um, out of those 14, and you know, we can even write them all out. I'm going to go ahead and write them all out on the left side here. I'm going to say our first subsequence is 101 one. then we have 0 1 0 I'll speed this up when I'm done all right I think I did that right uh, we'll find out later if I did or not um, so I've written out our 14 subsets and that'll make it a little bit easier for us to draw the tree you don't actually have to do this but I think this might make it easier for you to kind of keep your place so um, what we're asking here on the first branch after our root like and the root is just kind of like this is the start square this is like when you play Monopoly you put all your pieces here and then every time you come back to it you get $200 um, not quite as profitable in this case but um, this is where we start, and it doesn't really count as part of the depth of the tree. So, depth one, um, we're going to do our first letter of or our first character of each of each sequence. So, we basically want to say, you know, every one of these sequences, because there are only zeros and ones, every one of these fourteen either starts with a zero or starts with a one. So, I'm going to go ahead and put our, our our zeros up here, and. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw our whole tree before I start filling it in. So that All right, so this is what our, our tree of depth 3 looks like with before we fill anything in. We know that every single time there's only a choice between 0 and 1, so every branch branches exactly twice. Not three times, not one time, always twice. And, and, and if you look at it, the root's just 1, and then there's 2 here, and then there's 4 here, and then there are uh, eight in the end. It doubles every time, basically. Um, so anyways, what we want to say is, okay, starting off, um, how many of our sequences begin with a zero? This is the first letter of each sequence. So how many is that? So there, there's one, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six sequences that begin with zero. And, you know, we know there's 14, so that means that there are eight sequences that begin with one, right? You with me so far? Um, so then, that's that's kind of the obvious part. And I think almost everybody got the tree right, uh, at least that, you know, drew it right. Um, so then what we want to do is we want to say, well, what comes next? Let's say that after we, after our one, let's just look at the ones for now. 
Um, after our sequence that begins with a 1, and there are 8 of those, um, so then what? So out of all the ones that begin with 1, some of them have a 0 after the 1, and then some have another 1. So let's look at those zeros, and let's say, so out of these 8, we're only going to look at the ones that begin with a 1. How many of them start with a 0? Or, or how many of them have the first two characters of 1 and 0? So there's 1, there's 1, there's 1. So 3, 4, 5. So that's 5 of these. 5, 1, zeros. So there are 5 substrings or subsets here that are, are uh, 1, 0, something. <laughs> Um, and then, as far as ones, well, we know again that there were eight here, so we know that there's going to be th there's going to be three uh, that are one one. And let's just count to make sure. There's a one one. There's a one one. There's a one one. Three of them. All right. So we'll label that three. We kind of know that because we know that these two have to add up to this. Um, boy, I didn't really give myself enough room here, did I? All right. So how many are there that are one zero zero? That's the whole string. There's one. And I think that's it. Is that it? That's it. So there's one of those. And then 101, there's one, there's one, there's one, and there's one. So four. Cool. So we've got everything that begins with a, or actually, no, we're not quite done yet. So then 110, um, there's one. And there's one, two, and one, one, one. Only got one of those. Okay, so we've now done all of these. We've now taken care of all of the ones that begin with a one. We, we know that there are, there's eight that begin with one. There's five that begin with one, zero, something. And then there's four that are one, zero, one. Um, and so we're half done. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this second part because it's, it's basically a repeat of the same thing. Okay, so I've gone ahead and finished the whole thing, at least in terms of counting our, uh, our frequencies. And um, one of the tricks you can do to check yourself on a tree is remember, we know that way back here at the very beginning at the root, we had 14 combinations, right? So at every layer of the tree, we should still sum to 14. So like there's 14 three length sequences. Um, in layer two, we have six that are beginning with zero and eight that begin with one. Eight plus six, still 14. Then in the third layer, we have uh, two plus four is six, plus five is 11 plus 3 is 14, so it's still 14. And then if we add these all up too, it's still going to be 14. So we know that we haven't like skipped anything anywhere. We know that it all still adds up to 14. And um, the one other thing that he asked you to do that you might actually want to use a calculator for, I'm going to go ahead and pull mine out, is we want to calculate the probability of each of these. And actually, we, we've kind of already done half the work there because we can just write, we just take the fractions over however many are in the previous uh, layer. In other words, um, 6 here, well this is 6 out of the 14, so the probability here is going to be 6 fourteenths, which I'm going to just pull this thing out to do. So 6 divided by 14 equals 0. 0.428 or 0. 0.43. So we could write that one in. 0. 0.43. Right, and then and then the other side of that is going to be. Uh, I mean, we can actually do the math here. Eight divided by fourteen equals 0.57. So that's 0.57. Right. So those are the probabilities. And actually, I think it may even be helpful rather than writing them like this to to put the probabilities on the uh, on the links. 0.43. That makes it more clear that we're kind of measuring the like the chance of each split happening. Um, so again, I'm going to do the math on these and fast forward. Actually, here we go. Um, so remember again, this when we move into the second layer, we're going to be doing 2 over 6 and 4 over 6 to calculate these probabilities. We're no longer out of 14 because we want to calculate the probability at each split. Um, 
so there we go. So Okay, so I've labeled the whole thing, and this is a little bit sloppy looking, but it, it gets the point done. Um, one of the, the other part of this question was, uh, I think it was one of the questions underneath it is, does this tree identify any patterns? And it, it does, actually, because what we would expect here, and this is one of those things where you, you talk about, like, when you, when you have something that's totally random, like flipping a coin, you expect that you're going to get a, a, an even mix of heads and tails, an even mix of zeros and ones, and and that there shouldn't really be any long-term patterns like there shouldn't it shouldn't be like every time you get a heads you always get tails tails heads tails following that or something like there's no like secret patterns uh, to to randomness like that so this is kind of a short a short sample so we we may actually uh, not we may not get a perfectly even mix even if it were random but um, what a tree can do though is um, it can help us see non-randomness if it's there to be seen and one of the places where you can really see it in this tree is um, is right here where we have the uh, the the sequences that say that are one zero something um, because it turns out that when we have a one zero something um, four out of five of those are one zero one and only one is one zero zero and that means that there's a little bit of structure here because when we see this, I mean, it's no, it's not very close to being a 50-50. This one is 50-50, but like, this means that if we were to continue this sequence, you could probably make predictions saying, well, whenever we see a 1-0, if I always predict a 1 to be the next, you know, the third, the third character in the sequence, then I'm going to be right 80% of the time. And that's, that's pretty good. I mean, being right 80% of the time is a lot better than being right 50% of the time. So there is a little bit of a pattern here, and that pattern is that one zero, or one of the patterns, one of the most pronounced patterns, is that in this sequence, whenever you have a one zero, it's almost always got a one after it, and not a zero. Well, four out of five times. So there's a little bit of structure. Some of you uh, said no. Basically, if we had a, a, a perfectly random sequence and also a sequence that maybe was a lot longer like if this was a thousand characters long and we somehow took the time to make a tree we would actually have a computer do it for us if it were that long but um if we did that and it was totally random we would expect every one of these splits to be like 0.5 and 0.5 they should all be 50 50 or, or very close to it maybe 49 51 and something like that but basically random when we only have two options would would give us a tree that is almost perfectly balanced with 50/50 splits everywhere in it and we don't see that we have we have some things are slightly favored a few things are significantly favored and a few things are 50/50 so uh that was that was that question on that homework and I'm going to end this video uh with with that